Genetic counselors can do a great job with Fabry disease. We're perfectly suited to be the one who helps people understand how Fabry disease runs in families and the impact of, family, of Fabry disease on family members and understanding the impact of who might be at risk to have Fabry disease symptoms. Since Fabry disease is such a sneaky condition and that the symptoms are not things you can measure easily. The symptoms are things like burning pain in the hands and feet that can't be measured on a nerve conduction test. Or they can be issues with gastrointestinal issues, with diarrhea and constipation that can look like somebody is just kind of making it up if you can't find a reason. So when we talk about Fabry disease and genetic counselors, they're great for going out and educating about what Fabry disease is and how Fabry disease uh, can impact someone's life and how it can be that uh, physicians can find people with Fabry disease. In day-to-day -day life, genetic counselors do a great job managing care for patients with Fabry disease. Um, genetic counselors can help patients with Fabry disease understand what monitoring tests are important on a regular basis and why you do them. Why are we doing a cardiac MRI when you just had an echocardiogram? These are questions that patients might ask. The other piece is that when you find one patient with Fabry disease, on average you have five additional family members and that's just the X-linked inheritance. And genetic counselors can draw a pedigree and indicate each person who might be at increased risk and then tell them how to get tested in a very specific way that means they won't be confused. They don't have to worry about insurance piece, they can worry about this. Where are the free testing programs? Where are there not free testing programs? I think genetic counselors and Fabry disease are most important in figuring out next steps. What do you do next to improve your life, to get on treatment, to do what you need to do for your family members? And this is important because Fabry disease is a whole family disease. It's not just one person. Usually it's a son, a mom, a grandpa, an aunt, a cousin. And genetic counselors can help navigate that maze. At Emory University, we have a lysosomal storage disease center where we focus on the coordination of care for Fabry patients. We have a patient-centered model where we try to coordinate all of their assessments, all of their monitoring, all of their treatment in one place, and then refer out where it's important. So we've already identified nephrologists, neurologists, cardiologists, all the specialists that are going to help optimize the monitoring treatment of Fabry patients. Um, for geneticists, they are the primary contact because they understand the quirks that are go in treating a patient with Fabry disease, the autonomic dysfunction, the reason that you don't really want to use beta blockers. These are different things that really a medical geneticist can help the other team members and also external team members understand. Uh, genetic counselors play a large role at Emory. Each genetic counselor focuses on a particular disease in the center, and we have three counselors that focus on Fabry disease. One exclusively, that would be me, and then the rest of them who have pieces and parts of Fabry disease and other genetic conditions, which really provides a great team approach that's patient-focused and hopefully uh, provides the best possible outcomes.